In this tutorial, I'm going to cover section 4 of the pilot's operating handbook for the Cessna 172S, which contains information on normal procedures. As always, the section starts with the table of contents, which itemizes all the information to be discussed. Here we have the introduction, which states that section 4 provides procedures and amplified instructions for normal operations using standard equipment. And if you have any non-standard equipment, i.e. additional options you may have purchased for your aircraft, you can find that information in section 9. Here we can see the important air speeds or V speeds, and it tells us that, unless otherwise noted, these speeds are based on a maximum weight of 2,550 pounds and may be used for any lesser weight. The only exception here is the maximum recommended turbulent air penetration speed which decreases as the weight of the aircraft goes down. And we can see that the maximum demonstrated crosswind velocity here is 15 knots. And if you're flying a, an aircraft, in this case it could be a Cessna 172 that has an electronic ethos like the Garmin G1000, you still need to memorize all these V speeds. However, it does kind of help you out because if we look here, you can see that there's these little speed bugs on the airspeed ticker tape and that tells you what VX is, the best glide speed if you have an engine failure, and then also what VY is. So some of this information, the most crucial part, uh, pieces of information, are kind of displayed for you. And I believe if you go into the uh, one of the menu pages on the G1000, you can retrieve some of the V speeds in the checklists. So going back to section four, we can see here we've got the normal procedures which explains what to do in a pre-flight. I won't go over that in detail here. Instead, I'm going to have a series of videos where I actually pre-flight uh, a Cessna 172S and we'll go through these lists quite extensively uh, at a later time. So these are all pre-flight inspection. Um, now we get to before we start the engine and from this point forward the following procedures will be operational. I won't go over them item by item, but in the future I will have uh, separate tutorials that I'll either do in Microsoft Flight Simulator or uh, in the actual aircraft where I'll go over these uh, lists and show you how they are actually done in the real world. Here we have starting the engine, starting the engine with the battery, with external power, here we've got before takeoff checks, before takeoff checks, more before takeoff checks. Usually what we do is run up the engine, make sure we have the weather, the current um, pressure setting. Um, here we've got takeoff, and then there's different ways we can take off. We can do a normal takeoff. We can do a short field takeoff where we might have a runway that's going to require maximum takeoff performance. Here we've got in route climb. We've got cruise. Now once we get to our airport we're going to start our descent. Then we have the before landing checklists, the actual landing. We could do a normal landing. We could do a short field landing if we're going to a small airport. We have a bulk landing. We have after landing checklists and then securing the airplane. Basically shutting everything down, tying the airplane down to the tie downs, putting chocks in the wheel, shutting the engine off, the whole nine yards. Now we have amplified procedures and that kind of gives you more, rather than just a checklist, it gives you a, a, a paragraph form a description of what you should do for these various uh, procedures. Here's the pre-flight, starting the engine, here we've got stuff on taxiing. Here we can see a diagram on how to manipulate the controls when you're taxiing if you have uh, winds that are significant. Because remember, 
if you're taxiing the aircraft and the winds are strong, you can get under that wing and it can catch that wing and flip your airplane over. And that has been known to happen, so you have to be very cautious of that. Even on the note here, it says strong quartering tailwinds require caution. Avoid sudden bursts of the throttle, sharp braking when the airplane is in this attitude. Use the steerable nose wheel and rudder to maintain direction. And you can see here, if you have uh, quartering, quartering winds, it tells you how to manipulate controls for each sector that the wind might be coming from. Here we've got warm up, magneto check, alternator check, elevator trim, landing lights, power check on takeoff, wing flap settings, crosswind takeoffs, in route climb, cruise. And here it says a little nice note that cruise flight should use 75% power as much as possible until the engine has operated for a total of 50 hours or oil consumption is stabilized. Operation at this higher power will ensure proper seating of the piston rings and is applicable to new engines and engines in service following cylinder replacement or top overhaul of one or more cylinders. So just something to keep in mind. And if you're flying an old analog Cessna, if you look at some of the tachometers, there will actually be little white tick marks towards the higher end of the green arc. And what those tick marks are, they represent 75% power, and there'll be a little number next to the bottom of the tick mark. And it will say SL, so that's 75% power at sea level. Then the next one is at, I believe, 5,000 feet, and then there's one at seven and 10,000. So it kind of gives you a precise measurement to know the 75% power for that aircraft. In the G1000, um, you'd have to look at the display uh, differently. Here we can see some performance data for zero wind, keep in mind, for zero wind for various power settings and altitudes. Here we can see leaning for the exhaust gas temperature. In an older Cessna, you'd have an exhaust gas temperature gauge. In the newer G1000, it'll actually show you uh, the temperatures of each of the individual cylinders. And on top of that, it will show you the RPM, the um, exhaust gas temperature, a whole host of information. And it's much more robust and easier to see and to lean the engine more properly. Here we have fuel saving procedures for flight training operations, fuel vapor procedures. Here we get into stalls, spins. Here we have landings, cold weather operations. And one thing I was told by an instructor is to minimize the battery usage during cold operation weather operations. So in the normal pre-flight you put the flaps down, you do your operations, and normally on a regular day you'd put the flaps back up and then start the engine. If it's very cold outside, what you can do is hand turn the propeller a few times, make sure you turn it in the right direction because there might be check valves that are one way so you don't want to do damage to any of the plumbing. Turn the propeller over a few times, that'll loosen the oil and allow the starter to engage and spin up the engine with uh, less resistance. Once you get the engine started, after doing this procedure to the propeller, you can then uh, retract the flaps and that way you can serve battery uh, consumption by raising and lowering the flaps before you ever started the engine. Here we've got more uh, cold weather operations, noise characteristics, hot weather operations, and then we go to table five, or section five, which has a bunch of tables for aircraft performance. And so that's all there is to section four. Very simple and straightforward, and it's really that easy.